Hello, welcome to lesson eight of Mastering Java. Uh, here what we're going to do is learn how to use the break statement. Uh, and the break statement is basically used when you're working with loops in Java. And the loop that we've learned so far is the for loop. But just keep in mind that here in a few lessons we'll learn about a couple of different other additional kinds of loops called the while loop and the do while loop. The break statement can be used with all, all of these types of loops. The bottom line is, let's just go ahead and take an example and kind of show you as we work here. Let's uh, create an integer i. We'll set it equal. Let, we're not going to initialize it here. We'll use it in a for loop. And let's set a for loop up. We've done these sorts of loops before. So we'll say that i is equal to 1. And we'll set the termination condition i is less than or equal to 10. And we'll increment i++. plus plus. And let's go ahead and create an inner set of brackets here. So this for loop is going to run, every time we go through it is going to execute everything between these curly braces from i is equal to 1 up to i is equal to 10 because I have less than or equal to 10 and we'll increment this uh, by 1 each time. So in other words this loop is going to execute 10 times. So inside of here system.out.println let's just kind of show you what I'm talking about here. Um, this is loop number and then over here we'll put i. So how do you think this is going to execute? This is all stuff we've done before. It should go 10 times through and then each time it should tell us the loop number that it's executing at. So let's go ahead and run this here. We've got an error. Let's see if we can figure out what it is. Simple typo should be print uh, ln like that. Let me go ahead and hit save and hit run. This is loop number 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. And so this is kind of the stuff we've been doing before. But occasionally, occasionally, you might be running a loop and you might be testing for a condition inside of this loop. And when that condition is met, you, you want to break out of the loop. I'll give you a quick example. This is beyond the scope of what we can do here in this, in this lesson here. But let's say you were writing an address book file and you wanted to search all of your, ad, your, your, um, your customer number, uh, tell, uh, last names, for instance. And you wanted to find the first person in your address list with the last name of Gibson, right? So the way you would do that is you would set some kind of loop up, which would start at uh, entry, entry number one in your database up to ent entry number, let's say, had 10,000 um, uh, people in your database. So you would go from one to 10,000. So what your loop would be doing is it would be cycling through each and every person in your whole address book looking at the last name. And as soon as it finds a last name with Gibson, then you're done. That's all you cared about doing. You don't need to continue looping all the way to the end because you found what you were looking for. So when you hit Gibson, then it would break out of the loop and you know print a message or maybe it will tell you what entry number uh, it was or maybe it would give you the, the name and the address and the phone number of all, all the information you have for that that person with the name of Gibson. Obviously that's a little bit beyond the scope of where we're at but it's the same thing. You might use a break statement here. All right. So for instance um, if I'm going to go over here I might say if i is equal to 7 right if i is equal to 7 maybe that's what I'm searching for number seven, then break. So the break statement, what it's going to do is break out of the loop here. So what I'm going to do here is say system.out.println all looping is now done. So let me go and take this line out. Let me comment it out so it disappears. What we're going to see when we run it now is running, we're going to see all of our statements here and then we're going to see our final statement here which is outside of the loop uh, execute at the end. So you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, all looping is now done. Now let's take this comment back out. If the loop reaches number 7 then break. Let's see what happens. Let's go ahead and run it. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, all looping is now done because what happened was as soon as I, remember the incrementing of the loop happens at the top here. Whenever the increment, because it's right here, when the increment reaches number seven, the first thing it does is go in here and it checks it and then it breaks. And then it tells you all looping is now done. So depending on where you put the break statement, if you put it here or below, you may or may not see. Let me move it down here and just show you what would happen down here. It's exactly the same thing. If you put the break statement below the print statement, 
then you'll see the number seven print and then it'll break out. So essentially that is what the break statement is for. It's whenever you're looping through a large amount of data and you're searching for something, whenever you found it, you don't want to continue looping to the end. You want to break out and continue with program execution. In this case, program execution is this, but in a more, uh, this print statement here, but in more complicated programs, the the program might display telephone, address, whatever it is you were searching for, it might display that information to the user. That's what a break statement is for. Keep in mind, you can use the break statement um, for, um, you can use it for for loops, you can use it for while loops, which we'll learn about a little bit later. You can use it for do while loops, which we will also learn about here in a little bit as well. Now what I'd like you to do now is go on to the exercise. Uh, there's a really neat little, little uh, uh, example I have in there. Try to do it yourself first. See if you understand it. It's a little bit tricky, but it's uh, you have all the tools needed to pull it off. And then when you're done doing it yourself, you can look at my solution and see how yours compares to what I've done.